year I just introduced a bill to take appropriations authority away from the Game Fish and Parks and put it under the legislature. If I had been with the Game Fish and Parks since I think 1927 or thereabouts, maybe you know the number is close to that. Uh, and, and each time the bill was passed, you know, it seemed like we picked up steam each year and then I went to the legislature and it didn't get done. I don't know that it's ever going to get done. The fact is that those are public dollars. That, those, that's not private money. And the <coughs> Fish and Parks shouldn't treat it that way. I think the thing that's really been controversial lately is this area right outside Angostura Lake, out in the Black Hills, south of the Black Hills, where they're going to purchase some privately held land for $12 million, using, using taxpayers' dollars to make that purchase. Uh, the goal is a good one. The goal is for public hunting. Uh, that's the idea behind the purchase. But those are public dollars, and, and we need to ask ourselves, is that what those do? Is that what the taxpayers want us to do with those dollars, that $12 million? And I think that's a question that needs to be asked, and the next administration needs to ask that question and, and sit around the table with people from throughout South Dakota to get an answer. Uh, the Game Fish and Parks does receive the lion's share of its funding from unlicensed Where those dollars go. Uh, as uh, Senator Pedergrim pointed out, the management of those dollars is within the control of the Fish and Parks. The dollars are what they say continuously appropriated for them. That is, they can spend what those dollars produce. They can't spend more, but they can spend what those dollars produce. Uh, the legislature adopts a budget with those dollars appropriated to them, the dollars that are projected to be earned from those licenses. And those dollars then are thus appropriated and available for expenditure. What can we do about the deer population? Well, uh, I can relate to it perfectly. When Chris and I started on the campaign trail in early November, we were up in the northern part of South Dakota and heading west, and we saw lots of deer, and I thought we were going to hit a deer. And when we were in Lemon, we stopped and changed our bumper. We took the bumper off and put on one of these great big guards because, and I know a lot of you guys probably do that as well, because it's a fact of life. Uh, I don't pretend to be a, a biologist, an animal biologist. Uh, I hope that the uh, Game Fish and Parks Commission is making decisions about the deer licenses and what level they should be and how many should be issued based upon science. Uh, uh, if I see a deer in the road, you know, I, I know it's close to me, I don't know that that means that there's a lot more deer out there that are that should be shot and should be added to the, the uh, allowed limit. Uh, but uh, again, I, we have biologists in the Game Fish and Parks Department and the Game Fish and Parks Commission makes those decisions about the numbers of licenses and limits. And, and I'm certainly open to looking at that as governor, but I hope, I have to believe that we're uh, making those decisions based on science. And, and anecdotal evidence that we see of individuals uh, certainly can bear upon that, but it's not its not the same as, as a biologist scientific evaluation. I think we need to rely on science. Okay. And in fact, we'll conclude our question and answer period. We promised we'd stand at eight to five minutes at the end to address certain issues. And that's the day we started the start. Yeah, he started at the start. You want me to go ahead? Thank you again, Joe, and thanks everybody for for having us and, and allowing us this time to visit with you and, and to take your questions. And I look forward to when we're done here with the formal part to taking any other questions that you might have. Again, uh, the issues involving agriculture are really, really important to the future of South Dakota. In fact, it's the most important area there is. Uh, you all understand that all real wealth comes from the land, and we need to be respectful of that. We need to be respectful of the true environmentalists, which are the farmers and ranchers throughout South Dakota. Uh, and, and, and frankly, that lifestyle and that way of managing our resources is under attack. It's under attack all the time, whether it's from PETA or whether it's from people who uh, want to make use of your property without your permission. Uh, that's going on a lot, and, and the next administration has to be sensitive to it. But before we can do any of the really interesting, creative things, like infrastructure, like farm market goals, like education, 
we have got to get the budget in balance. Believe me, when the, when the governor issued a press release today saying that we ended the year in the black, it's because we were using $100 million or thereabouts of federal stimulus money that is not going to be available next year. And there's no plan in this administration for what we're going to do when we come up $100 million short next year. As your next governor, I'm going to inherit that problem. I tried to do something about it in the last legislative session with bipartisan support from Dave Knudsen, my friend who was the Republican leader of the Senate, and other members of both parties. We tried to reduce the size of government. We tried to say state government is too big, let's reduce it by 2 or 3%. Senator Knudsen thought that would save us 10 to $20 million. But this administration refused to reduce the size of state government. We've done it before in South Dakota, I know of at least on two other occasions when we made across the board cuts. We were even willing to separate out Medicaid and education, and still they wouldn't allow a reduction in the size of government. We have to get our arms around that problem. And believe me, as your next governor, I'm going to We talked a little about it, uh, about farming issues. They're, they're terribly important to me. It's a part of tradition that really needs to be protected in South Dakota. It really needs our full time and attention. You know, I was talking to a guy the other day that I was going to come down here and we were going to talk about agriculture and, and it was a farm bureau function. And, and he said to me, well, that's, that's pretty important. That's where our food comes from. And I said, you know what? A lot more than our food comes from agriculture. Our work ethic comes from agriculture. Our values come from agriculture. Just about everything that you and I are proud about, about being South Dakotans, comes from agriculture. I'm really proud to be here. Really, really proud to be running for governor of South Dakota, and I can hardly wait to get started on the challenges that we face again. Thank you. Well, I want to uh, begin uh, the way Scott ended it by thanking you all for coming. It's a, it's a Saturday night in Springfield, and the air conditioning in your house is probably working well, and the recliner is there. Television programs are probably better than the program that you've been watching. But yet you came out. You came out. And Scott and I both want to be governor of South Dakota. We're both working hard. We're both uh, trying to uh, convince the, the, the voters of South Dakota that we're the right person for the job. Uh, and I'm no different. Uh, but you're here because you care about South Dakota. You gave up the television or the movie or the picnic or whatever because you care about South Dakota. And I do too. I do too. Now some folks want a great impression that South Dakota is broke, that our schools don't work, that our economy doesn't work, that our state government is bloated. Uh, but South Dakota is not broke. South Dakota is a state we can be proud of. Time Magazine, they're not an expert on finance. The writers for Time Magazine, come on. Moody. The most respected, one of the most respected credit analysts in the world, upgraded South Dakota's bond rate, upgraded it in this economy. Tell me that's not an indicator. Now, I don't have somebody videotaping Scott like he's got somebody videotaping me. Now, that should make you wonder what's going on here. It makes me wonder. It makes me sad. I care about South Dakota. I worked hard. My grandparents came from Denmark. My dad worked for every bit he got. When I was a senior in high school, our farm finances went upside down. And we had to auction the livestock and the equipment. And my parents were deaf. Bill told you that. They had to take a job as janitors at Augustana. And they drove round trip to Sioux Falls uh, and worked as janitors the rest of their lives. When I went to school, I worked my way through school. I washed dishes for my meals. I welded on the Lowe's King assembly line. I welded and painted water towers for, for my uh, education funding. I drove bus. I got a commercial bus driver's license and drove, drove bus. I worked for what I got. I'll work hard for you. Nobody will work harder for you than I will. South 